Backstreet's back? Okay. Very well. Okie dokie, artichokey. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. I will be debuting another new feature with this video. I'm just cranking out the new features in 2019, aren't I? Anyway, this one, this is actually one that I did hint at in my State of the Channel video last month. Now, I don't know how frequent this feature will be. It all depends on how often an album comes along that fits the criteria. But anyway, I call this feature Now and Then, and the concept is very simple. I review two albums, both by the same artist, uh, one of them being their latest album, hence the Now part of it, and uh, the other album is one from their past. That's where the Then comes in. I just thought it would be an interesting idea and a fun new concept uh, as a way to uh, possibly compare where an artist is at now with where they were X number of years ago. But anyway, the inaugural subject of my Now and Then feature is the Backstreet Boys. And for now, we're going to be talking about their latest album, DNA. Now, I have a complicated history with the Backstreet Boys. I really enjoyed their first few albums. Uh, in fact, for a while there, they were really neck and neck with NSYNC in terms of which band I like more. But with Black and Blue, though, it felt like their music started a downward slide in quality. Uh, I like that album, but nothing they put out ever since then really grabbed me nearly as much. And especially when they did that uh, misguided, ill-conceived collaborative project with New Kids on the Block. At that point, I basically had just written them off. Uh, however, that being said, I never stopped picking up their solo albums. Uh, Nick has always been my favorite of the group, so I've been keeping up really well with uh, his albums. Uh, although, I actually, uh, this one was out for almost a year before I figured it out and uh, managed to get it. And yes, despite what I just said about uh, NKOTBSB, uh, I still had to pick up uh, his collaborative project with Jordan Knight, uh, because, hey, it's Nick Carter. I mean, come on. And it actually turned out to be a pretty good album. And I also had to check out uh, Howie DeRose and A.J. McLean's uh, debut albums, and th those were pretty good as well. Uh, the only solo album that I don't have is Brian Luttrell, and primarily because he's pretty much firmly, or at least that album was pretty much firmly in the contemporary Christian genre, and uh, Christian music has just never done anything for me. But anyway, fast forward to last year. I had seen the video for the single Don't Go Breaking My Heart drop on YouTube several months ago, but never bothered checking it out until the reviews of DNA started coming in. And when I finally did check out that song and the rest of the album singles, I was actually rather kind of impressed. Uh, impressed enough to pick up the album, as you can see. And I'm glad to say my impression did not stop with the singles. Uh, Chances was another good one that uh, really appealed to me. I'm sometimes fascinated with odds of probability kind of stuff and that those scenarios are brought up in the lyrics. That's kind of the subject of the song. And uh, No Place is an okay single, too. Uh, it's got a cute video, but it was honestly the least impressive of the singles. And uh, that's one downside to this album. It is by no means a perfect album, and does have several tracks that fall into the Heard It All Before standard boy band sound, uh, Nobody Else, and Just Like You Like It. Uh, those are two other songs that just didn't do much at all for me. I mean, you know, it's you, you could find those pretty much on any other Backstreet Boys album. And uh, Is It Just Me is a little better. It has a bit of a different kind of a quasi-EDM kind of a sound to it uh, that is mildly ear-grabbing. But otherwise, again, that song just doesn't do a whole lot to distinguish itself. Now, uh, I always like to avoid listening to all the tracks on an album before picking it up. I like to leave some surprises just for the fun of it. And taking that chance uh, mostly paid off in this case, I have to say. The, the a cappella song Breathe was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it reminds me, you know, being an a cappella song, it reminds me of I Thought She Knew from NSYNC's No Strings Attached album. And it just really, it totally shows off the guy's vocal synergy and keen sense of harmony, which to me have always been Backstreet Boys' strongest points. Uh, the closing track, OK, is interesting as well, with its kind of trap-like touches. Uh, and honestly, good on them for taking a chance like that and doing something a little different. I'd almost always rather see an artist try something new and fail th rather than just keep cranking out the same old stuff. Another good track on here is The Way It Was. 
Uh, that kind of has a throwback 60s soul sound to it that reminds me of some of the stuff on Megan Trainer's first album, to provide a more recent example. And this is where we come into what I think was the strongest aspect of this album, the handful of throwback influences that I think worked really well. I really enjoyed New Love uh, with how it combines some of the R&B and soul influences from mostly the 80s and 90s, but a little bit from previous decades as well, with just a tiny bit of hip hop. Now, the catchiest song on the album, and my personal favorite, is Passionate. It has a fantastic 70s-inspired funk groove that just kind of hits the ground running, and a great instrumental hook, and I'm not sure if those are real horns or synthesized horns, but uh, it's just great all the same, and it's also got some of the best lyrics on the album. And it was those moments on this album, those uh, retro-inspired moments that were so strong and so in their wheelhouse, I felt, that honestly, if they were to head more in that direction on their next album and put even more of those throwback funk and soul and R&B sounds on it, I would be totally on board. Now, the one track on this album that I thought, quite frankly, was a real dud was Chateau. And it has to do partly with that rather lame hook Whoa ho, whoa ho, the chateau. It, it's almost like the writer came up with that hook one morning and he just loved it so much that he decided he could build a whole song around it. No, he couldn't, as you'll hear if you uh, check out this track. Uh, yeah, that is just the one true moment of cringe on this album. But overall, yeah, I was quite pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed this album. And now it's starting to make me wonder if I've missed anything good by ignoring the last, what, three or four albums in their, dis in their discography. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to uh, go back and uh, see if I missed anything good. But, yeah, this is a good album, I have to say. I was very pleasantly surprised. But anyway, that was now. This is then. Millennium. This is their second album in the U.S., their third album in the rest of the world. It was their most popular and successful album, the one most everybody knows about, and the one that all boy band pop albums since then have been measured against, and for very good reason. Uh, seriously, if you haven't listened to this album all the way through yet, uh, you've got to give it a listen. Um, every track on here is just amazing. I Want It That Way, one of their biggest hits, and perhaps their signature song. It had that slightly ambiguous lyrical hook, uh, You Want It What Way? Uh, and the perfect execution, uh, which is probably one reason why it got nominated for both Song of the Year and Record of the Year at that year's Grammy Awards, uh, and became such a huge hit. Uh, Show Me the Meaning of Being Lonely is a textbook ballad, flawlessly delivered. Uh, the One, which is probably my favorite song on the album, has those goosebump-inducing harmonies by the guys laid over that soaring instrumental in the chorus. That's one of those songs that I must hear all the way through, or I'm just not happy. Uh, it's Gotta Be You is insanely catchy and vastly underappreciated. Uh, Don't Want You Back is another hard-hitting deep cut. Uh, Back to Your Heart is almost as beautiful a ballad as Show Me the Meaning. And uh, Spanish Eyes, that's just got such delicate instrumentation and just beautiful, and that's another hidden gem. Now, because I'm a little weird, uh, I do have a couple of minor gripes about this album. Very, very minor ones, I'll warn you. Um, they're actually the opening and closing tracks, Larger Than Life and The Perfect Fan. And the only reason I have a problem with them is because they're self-referential. See, I told you I'm weird. Uh, by self-referential, I mean they make the subject matter out of the guy's stardom and their profession and identities as famous singers. And it's just because I prefer songs that take on a narrative that I have more of a chance of personally relating to. And obviously I can't relate to being a famous recording artist. And that's actually, as a side note, that's actually one reason I don't care for very much hip-hop or rap. It's because the artists, well, first of all, they're always uh, name-dropping themselves. And, you know, they're making so many of their songs about, you know, being famous and all this other stuff. So, as I said, very, very technical reason uh, that a lot of you will probably look at me sideways about. But uh, other than that, honestly, this album is beyond reproach. Uh, it is an essentially perfectly executed boy band album, uh, which rightfully earned a Grammy nomination for Album of the Year in its year, as well as near-unanimous critical praise, and it's staggering and record-breaking for its time sales figures. It was the best-selling album of 1999, and it set a record for single-week album sales, which it would hold for a precious eight months. Uh, but anyway, yeah, fantastic album. Listen to it if you haven't yet. Backstreet Boys Millennium. 
So anyway, as if you couldn't guess by now, I recommend Millennium far more than I recommend DNA, as it was their absolute and undeniable peak, and a peak for boy band albums as a whole. Uh, but I do recommend at least listening to DNA as well. So uh, yeah, that is it for my inaugural edition of Now and Then. I hope you enjoyed it. That's it for this video. Uh, comments, suggestions, requests, constructive criticisms, any or all of the above, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I encourage the feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Also, please be sure to subscribe as well. I'd love to have you as a subscriber and check out all my past videos to see what you might have missed. Plus, I invite you to check out my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are all linked to in my description below. They're all very much worth your time. They wouldn't be in that list if they weren't. Also, I'm now on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below. Be sure to follow me there so you can enjoy my stray thoughts and random musings about music and so forth. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob. End of video.